Better Call Saul Season 6, Jeff Explained. With Jeff being a character that we were introduced to in Season 4 of the show, and his involvement now being critical to the show's finale, I thought it would be worth taking a look into the backstory of Jeff and all that's known about him, whilst also giving my theories and predictions to how the character is going to end up. So let's get into it. Here is Better Call Saul Season 6, Jeff Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. We first saw Jeff in a gene sequence that occurred in Season 4 of the show, and it's something I never thought would be linked to the involvement of Jimmy's demise. Jimmy could outrun Albuquerque, but there was no outrunning those who had been there and moved away. Jeff is an individual that we believe to be an only child and lives with his mother Marion in Omaha, Nebraska. He still lives with his mother despite being around 50 years old. He was once a resident in Albuquerque where he got on the wrong side of the law and in Marion's words was part of the wrong crowd. He was arrested for public intoxication and urination. Once moved to Omaha, he became a taxi driver in the area for Omaha United Cabs. This is where the first connection was made to Gene and his first appearance was given to us. In Season 4, Episode 1 of Better Call Saul, we saw Jeff for the first time. Gene had got into a taxi after leaving the hospital and the taxi that he got inside of was that of Jeff's. However, at the time it was played by a different actor called Don Harvey, but due to contractual obligations with another show, he was unable to return to Season 6 of the show. When Gene was in the taxi, he noticed an Albuquerque Isotopes air freshener hanging in Jeff's car, the same one that we actually saw Kim holding when she was in court in Season 6 of the show. This showed the connection to Albuquerque and started the suspicion of recognition that we later went on to see. Jeff's suspicions were strong, strong to the point where he let Gene out of the car but he didn't drive off as he was looking in the mirror of the car to see if it was the infamous Saul Goodman. And this was all we saw of him at first. Following this appearance, we then saw Jeff in Season 5 of the show, where it did seem as though the character was slightly different in terms of persona and tone, compared to the recasting that we had for Season 6 of the show. The Jeff that we had in Season 5 approached Gene in the shopping mall, and stated how he recognised him from all of the billboards and ads from his days in Albuquerque when he lived with his ex, a character that we never really heard of beyond that point. Jeff was adamant that the man seated in front of him was Saul Goodman, to the point where he was almost manipulating Gene and talking down to him to get him to do the Better Call Saul catchphrase from his commercials. This version of Jeff seemed a little more chaotic in the sense that he wasn't afraid, timid, or anything like that. He was the type of person that seemed as though he would speak what was on his mind and looked a little crazy. This paired with the high-pitched laugh and stare that he had was something that was quite different to what we've seen in Season 6. The last we saw of him in Season 5 was of him saying to Gene that it was nice to meet him and that he was a huge fan of his, before walking off with Buddy. Season 6 was where we really got to go behind the character and learn more about him. This was where the recasting occurred and with that came a slightly different version of the character to what we'd seen in Season 4 and 5 of the show. We had Pat Healy recast as Jeff, and we saw a version of the character that came across a little more naive and out of his depth when talking with Gene. This didn't seem like the same Jeff that was manipulating Gene in the previous conversation. We saw him with his mother where she definitely outspoke him, and he was a little under the thumb of her. The first movement Jeff emitted was the shaking of his head as if to be fearful of the fact that Gene was there, something that I feel the previous version of the character wouldn't have done. In his encounter with Gene in the house, we saw him threaten Gene in the garden, where he stated that he could pick up the phone and call the police, but he didn't. Instead, he was recruited into being part of Gene's plan to manipulate Jeff into staying quiet, without him realising. This showed that the character was susceptible to what was going on, and was easily manipulated by the smooth-talking Saul Goodman and Jimmy that was coming out when working on the execution of the plan. As the plan was going on in robbing the department store, we saw that Jeff was an amateur in doing this, and definitely suited the life to petty crime more when compared to what Gene was devising. He was making mistakes in the training and also slipped up during the actual scheme unfolding, leading to Gene needing to improvise on his feet in order to buy time to get them out. However, he did succeed in the task at hand. Once the next day arrived, you could sense that he was happy with how he did, and that he was proud of completing the scheme by the smile that was on his face. Even after Gene told him that they were done following the scheme, upon Gene re-entering Jeff's life by recruiting him into the identity theft plan, he was more than happy to get involved at the opportunity to make some more money. He said, hell yeah. 
showing that it was something that he was extremely excited about. We don't see him smile when he comes in from his shift at work at all, but the two times that we've seen him smile in the show were when he had completed the first scheme and when he was then recruited into the next one. As the episode went on, he played a pivotal role in the identity theft plan. He participated as the acting cab driver, which was easy for him to do due to his actual occupation. When Gene pulled Buddy in for not wanting to rip off the guy with cancer because Buddy's morals took over, he asked for Jeff's opinion, and Jeff uttered, Oh, well, I don't know. I can see both sides, kind of. This not only showed the indecisiveness over the morals that he held and the fact that just like Gene, he was prepared to rip somebody off who was ill, and I imagine the fear of not wanting to get on the wrong side of Gene, but the fact that he felt he had a good thing going and was fearful of losing what he had, I imagine they were the two reasons as to why he answered that. He's enjoying the money. After answering, he did a slight turn towards Gene, almost like he was looking for validation in the statement that he made, and that he was okay about it. The fact that he was seated as well in a slightly lower position showed the inferior position that he held in the relationship. This was the opposite to the shot that we had in Season 5 of the show in the shopping mall, where Jeff had the high ground. In the last episode that we had of him, one episode before the finale of the show, he'd just been arrested on suspicion of burglary. This was because of Gene breaking and entering into the house. We saw a moment in the final episode that was either a moment of pure genius from him, or showed the weakness that we saw the very first time that we saw this iteration of the character in Season 6. There was a police car that pulled up behind him as he was outside of the house that Gene was in, waiting for him to come out. He put the car in drive and drove off and ended up crashing into a vehicle across the road, regardless of whether or not it was intentional. This was what allowed Gene to escape from the house and evade the police. Jeff could have thought that it was a good idea to do so and would cause a diversion, or he was in complete panic mode and was suspicious, thinking that the police were keeping their eye on him, and ultimately lost control due to the fact that he was nervous and that's something that I definitely think is up for debate. I wouldn't put it past him with it being intentional, due to the fact that in the previous episode, he was the one who raised the question around if the guy would still be asleep in the house, as they gave him the water with the substance several hours ago, so it showed that he does think of the outcomes and possibilities. Regardless of whether or not it was intentional, Jeff is now in jail and awaiting to be bailed out due to thinking he was responsible for the burglary. Whilst he was sat in jail, Marion had called somebody to inform the police that Gene was Saul and Saul was now on the run. I think this sets up a damning future for Jeff. With Saul on the run, nobody's coming to bail him out. Law enforcement will know that he's been associating himself with Saul Goodman, and that won't bode well for the character. I think Jeff will get sent to jail in the final episode for the crimes that he committed. Whilst Marion had done the right thing by calling the authorities on Saul, she's also sent her son to jail in the meantime. Jeff was a great and interesting character to include in the show, and one that I didn't expect to have a large impact and share a lot of screen time in the closing moments of Better Call Saul. Despite this version of Jeff being slightly different to the one that I thought we were going to get when we were first introduced to the character, I'm used to him now, and the balance between Jeff and Gene works well. So, there you have it. Better Call Saul Season 6, Jeff Explained. If you want to see more videos on Better Call Saul such as Endings Explained, theories and predictions or character breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you want to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. Are you a fan of Jeff? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.